they like my Colorado swag. Cause when I'm in that play, I don't really, I don't really know just how to act. And when I'm in it go, you know I'm acting bad. Holly get a bus with my Colorado swag. My Colorado swag, my Colorado swag. I think they like, I think they like my Colorado swag. My Colorado swag, my Colorado swag. Man, I swear, I think they like my Colorado swag. My Colorado swag. Pushing 180, speeding past competence and see you later, baby. baby. Colorado Army with soldiers like the Navy. Yeah. And vote is where we DMVR station. Bus post game presented by Green Mountain Dental Group. Uh, I'm Henry Chisholm. I'm here with Ryan Konigsberg. Ben Gerning's gonna be here later. And uh, we get to we get to have fun again. You know, we still haven't had one of these like negative post game shows, which I'm very grateful for. Uh quite grateful for that. And uh Yet another another week, another glass of whiskey. Yeah, you love that, don't you? I do love some whiskey. It's nice and gold. What's better, the whiskey, the Wh- win, whiskey. or being able to make the pun? Oh, ooh, good question. The win. Okay, good. Just need to make sure that the pun isn't like stealing from everything else that's going on. Nope. Uh, I love all wins. All wins are created equal. Okay. That's fair. That's 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 a good take. Um, in case you guys weren't paying attention, uh, in which case you're crazy, I guess. Colorado just beat <laughs> San Diego State twenty to ten. Um, and, and we want to start with some initial reactions to the game uh, and our biggest takeaways. So Ryan, I'll throw it to you. What is your biggest takeaway from this game? <sighs> I don't know how else to put this other than kind of what I just did. A win is a win, and I just sometimes feel like this fan base which i love oh so dearly lacks a bit of perspective like an ugly win to remain undefeated and clinch bowl eligibility when you had 24 hours to prepare for a game is a good thing and criticisms uh can be had for sure Mm -hmm. Uh, and we'll talk about you know things here and there but for me it's it's really hard for me to get like down on the team when they won wire to wire they were in control of everything on the defensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. And I, I get I, I know I know all about the past. I know it as good as anyone. But for me, it's like there's no need to worry. There's no need to be anxious. San Diego State can't complete a pass. I mean, the yeah. quarterback, honestly, if you <laughs> if you offered me right now that quarterback to start for the Broncos tomorrow, who have zero quarterbacks on their roster, I would say no. What would you say about Sam Neuer though? Absolute yes. I know. And and there there was the pick six. Yeah, bad, bad throw. It was a bad throw. But that happens. And that happens to every quarterback everywhere. Uh, the, the question is how often it happens. And so far, we haven't seen Sam Neuer make that many mistakes. And so if he does have that one right there, go ahead. It, it happens. And they moved on. It was just fine. That was the only touchdown San Diego State scored, which is crazy. Ten points. One of them, or seven of them, I guess, on a pick six. Yep. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's an amazing thing. The Buffs are bowl eligible. Who yeah. knows what's going to happen with bowls? Uh, yep. it, it would be very 2020 for us to be bowl eligible and not get to go to a bowl. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but a Carl Durrell led football team has never not qualified for bowl eligibility. It's true. He's six for six now. Isn't that so crazy to think about? Like Carl Durrell goes five for five getting the bowls at UCLA. And they're like, no, we can do better. And then you look at what's actually happened. It's like, well, it turns out you shouldn't be passing on five for five on bowls. You should see this as an opportunity to keep growing. You know, it's almost like if you had like given up on Tad Boyle or something. When when Tad just has this slow like upward trajectory yeah. all the way through, I feel like that's well because Tad. Tad, 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 Tad. <laughs> gets fired george carl after losing in the first round of the playoffs every year steep downtrend uh and so you know maybe carl durrell oh george carl um the buffs (laughs) would i would kill for a george carl-esque career uh for carl durrell at one point didn't george carl go like like 21 of 22 seasons he made it to the playoffs of in like 30 or three different teams that is true of the buffs right now (laughs) yeah exactly exactly it's like what 15 of 16 or something along those lines where we haven't gone to a bowl game so um i again going back to my original point i don't know like there was a time where the buffs would have lost this game 
Yeah. Like a San Diego State team that's decently coached comes in here. They're well, you know, they had more preparation time. There's a pl- plenty of excuses. Uh, and to me, not only did they win, they won by two scores. They covered. They they played better than Vegas thought they were going to. So, yep. all right, maybe not played better, but won by more. Yeah. So in the end, it's just like, give me the dub and get the hell out of there. Uh, obviously, you know, San Diego State had some answers for what the Buffs were trying to do on offense. Mm-hmm. The Buffs weren't trying to do a lot, but they did enough. And that's all that matters to me. And, you know, if we, I, I brought this up at one point during the game. I, I said, you know, when I was writing the preview for this, the way we do the previews is like the three questions um, going into this game. And at one point, one of them was, uh, how are the coaches going to handle this? Like, like, what is the game plan here? They come out and try to do some crazy stuff. And, and what I said was, I hope they don't. Mm. I, I hope that they don't blow a bunch of their trick plays or, like, their good ideas. They don't show too much oh, they in this sure game. Didn't. Exactly. <laughs> and that, to me, I don't know. I, I feel like if I had just published that instead of replacing it with something about the tight ends, which is probably more important, I, I would have a little bit more ground to stand on here. And I know that I typically do have a little bit more of a rosy view on what's happening with Colorado football but what I want to say my biggest takeaway today is that going into this game looking at these two teams on paper Colorado performing very well against Pac-12 caliber teams power five teams going up against a team that's been a little bit over 500 against Mountain West teams group of five teams you should be able to line up and just play regular football and wind out or wind up having a win at the end and that's what we saw. It wasn't pretty. There wasn't a lot of like cute plays going on. There weren't a lot of big plays. For Jarek. 32 carries for Jarek. We'll get there. We'll get there. Is that too much? Yes. Is um, We'll get there. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. But yeah, what they did is they lined up and said, it may not look great. It may not be our path to winning this game 40 to 10. But what we do know is that if we just go out there and play football and don't make too many mistakes, we're going to beat this team. And that's what they did. Just win. Yep. 3-0. and Yep. 3-0. and That's all that matters. 3-0. and Like, Carl Durrell yet to lose a game in Boulder. They clearly had a vanilla game plan. It frustrated a lot of people. I understand it. Yep. But you know what happened the last time the Buffs won a game to become bowl eligible? What happened? If you take both of these teams' scores, so mm-hmm. 2010, cut those in half, that was the score of that game. 10-5? 10 to 5. Really? Colorado beat Stanford in 2016 uh, to get their sixth win <laughs> of that season, become bowl eligible. It was way uglier than this one. Uh, and it, it, it's similar in certain ways, except for uh, Philip Lindsay had one less yard than uh, Jarek Broussard had today on one third of the carries. Uh, he had 12 <laughs> carries for 131 yards. Yeah. Um, Sefa Lufau, 12 for 25, 135 yards. I mean, it was the same thing that you saw out here today, uh, except for uglier. Now, you could argue that was a much better Stanford team, considering they had some guy on their team named Christian McCaffrey. I've heard he's pretty good. He's he's decent. Yeah. Uh, Buffs only Buffs held him to 4.4 yards per carry that day. That was basically the only offense Stanford had. The point is, I promise you no one was complaining that day. In fact, I was in <laughs> tears after the game. I was so happy. Um, no tears today. Um 2020 really s- takes that away from you. We'll see what happens after the Winsky. If you finish that during the mm. show, we'll see where you're at. I might just cry based on like some arbitrary thing <laughs> in my life. Um, we actually have someone asking what what uh, whiskey you're drinking, right? Yeah. Silver Buff is here saying, what's the Winsky of choice? Uh, it's known as Winford Reserve, a.k.a. Woodford Reserve. Um, funny question. Funny thing about that. I thought the bottle was almost empty. So I was just like, eh poured it all in there and it filled this glass all the way to the top so oh and then what happened was you turned around and looked at us and said guys it's a heavy pour <laughs> <laughs> and then we realized what we were getting into tonight um by the way that's producer ali monroy for those of you who don't know and she's gonna be here tonight too um so everyone else uh just if you're out there raise your wind ski. Raise your winsky. I don't have one i have a wind strava craft coffee that i'm pretty pumped about because a win fee? I said Waffy earlier <laughs> oh, and no. got no reaction yeah, from that's anybody. Rough. That's probably like the best case scenario. Um, let's keep going with the takeaways because I have more. Um, 
the next period. one, and we're going to get to the helmet stickers. Oh, and for those of you who haven't been here yet, the way this works is we're going to talk. We've got a bunch of things we want to talk about, but then we want to get to all of your questions at the end. So leave those in the chat, and we're not going to get to all of them right away. A couple of them maybe we'll get to early if they come up, but for the most part, we'll get to all those in like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, or let's just see where things take us. Um, but moving on with the takeaways, and not to spoil the... Uh, Helmet stickers, all that kind of stuff. I mean, Nate Landman. <laughs> Where is what is this guy? Like, like he is incredible. Oh it, yeah. He is he is the best defensive player in the Pac-12. I think that if the Buffs were playing a full season, if they played 10 games, I think you would be hard pressed to find a linebacker who is more deserving of a Buckus Award. And you Are know they giving one this year? I'm I would assume so. Could be the Buffs second. It could be. Matt Russell. I think at least one. Yeah, Matt Russell. Oh, I know at least one, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yep. I think that's the only one. I, I wouldn't know because because of COVID, we don't get to have like the same good times we used to have going out to Boulder and covering practices and standing in the hallway with all the trophies. And so it's been a while since I'm I've seen him. I'm talking in person with right. Dave Platty, who knows everything. Got a couple shout outs tonight. Deserved it. He, he does know everything. It's crazy. Like, I used to be overwhelmed by the notes every week, mm -hmm. but this week... And honestly, all season, like you get the 80 pages and you're just like, okay, I'm ready to buckle down because there's some good stuff in here. Uh, you really should tweet out whole, those little tidbits. I should tweet them out. I, but then I feel like I use them as a reason. Uh, what I should do is tweet those out and, and then use them to, to plug the podcast because instead of just going through all of them on the podcast, you could. Yep. We'll talk later. But um, Nate Landman, though, he is special. Um, I don't have the stat line in front of me, but I know like in the third quarter at one point, he had 11 tackles, three 10 of sacks. them by himself, three sacks, three and a half tackles for loss. He'd broken up a pass. You know, I'm sure he did plenty more after uh, he got a cramp. He 20 tackles. Wore it. None of I can't find updated stuff. Oh, so be careful mind. with that. Okay. Um, you should have maybe saved uh, this chat for king of the game, but it's okay. That's fine. We'll That's get a back good point. Around. I've, I, I'll save the nickname for him that I'm mad still mm. hasn't caught on for for uh, King of the Game. I'm excited to see. Oh, I think I might know what it is. <laughs> He's had 20 total it is. sacks, Ryan. No, 20 total tackles this year. That can't be right either. Okay. This whole, no, oh, yeah, not, not 20 total sacks. 17 in one week. Um, <laughs> I can't find. <laughs> which is so crazy. I can't 17. find any of his actual I wonder when stats. the last time a buff had uh, three sacks in a game was. Uh, Mustafa Johnson. Really? Years ago. And I'm not sure who tweeted it out, but again... Uh, I would guess that probably the, Brian Howland. He's usually right about those things. Eh, probably Brian Howland. I, I, I miss having being able to spend time. We don't have time to talk about how much fun covering practices is. Next year we'll be back to normal. But um, yeah, I just have to say my biggest takeaway is that Nate Landman really is as good as we all thought that he was. And we'll get we'll get more around uh, to Nate Landman. The other takeaway, and and I will. Oh, we got a, a, a comment here. Uh, buffs are undefeated since the new DNVR buff shirt came out. Wow. It's true. Yeah, that is true. They're also undefeated since they hired Carl Durrell. Yes. <laughs> they are undefeated since they hired Carl Durrell. Yep. They should hire Carl Durrell more often. They should. Should hire him again tonight. Yeah. Extension. It is time for an extension. Is <laughs> it time a, to start calling for an extension? That's a sore subject for Buffs fans. Oh, really? Don't extend coaches after right after big wins. Okay. And that wasn't really a big win. Even I Carl guess, Durrell? Uh, like symbolically it was a big win um we've got a I'm few hyped. people asking about um how the ncaa figured out bowl eligibility so if you want to touch on that because the buffs are bowl eligible now Henry's the expert on this yeah kind of stuff. so the way bowl eligibility works you know for for most of the country bowl eligibility could not be more simple because this year everybody is bowl eligible in the pac-12 though we found a way to complicate things the pac-12 decided that it's, it's members, the Pac-12 schools, would have to be 500 still to uh, make it to a bowl game, to be postseason eligible by their rules. Um, for those of you who don't spend a lot of time on Twitter, it was a sore subject for a couple days, and I think that that's for good reason. Um, we don't need to dig into that now, but now that they have gotten to uh, 500, I mean, because they'll only have three games left max, um, they are bowl eligible. The, the question now is how many bowls are going to be played. Right. Um, and, and in particular, which bowls get canceled? Because obviously each conference has tie-ins to different bowl games. The Pac-12, I believe, has had two of its bowl games get pulled, bringing the number down from 
eight to six, maybe. Okay. And again, like it, it, you shouldn't have in a conference only season more than six teams that are 500 or better in theory. Like things could break out differently. Unless multiple teams get to play SDSU. There is that. <laughs> and that's the elephant in the room. Although we should say if another team plays SDSU, odds are that they would lose because before tonight, since 2016, San Diego State was five and one against Pac-12 teams. And I think that that is worth noting. Five and two now. Yeah. Five and two now. And they have been good. And I don't I don't want people to like brush off this Aztecs team because they have competed with really good teams. You know, they've they've had double digit wins in four of the last five years. They've uh they've been lot. they've been ranked. They've been in the AP top twenty five in three of those years. One of the years they finished the season in the top twenty five. They have like nineteen draft picks in the last decade. This is a good program, a strong program, and let's give them some credit for that. Easily the best defense buffs have seen this year. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely. We, and we before the game were like, well, they've been doing it against the Mountain West teams, mm-hmm. uh, which is fair because the Mountain West is garbage. But one team in particular. Yeah, especially yeah. one team. But uh, as a conference, they are also trash. Uh, and you didn't know how good this SDSU defense was based on that. So uh, to see to see them on the field, they were legit. They yeah. Were legit. Um, and one thing I do want to point out on the negative side of things. The Buffs really did not spread the ball around tonight. And I thought that was one of their strengths coming into this game. Was, Agreed. It could be Dimitri Stanley. It could be Daniel Arias. Did he even play? Uh, I, I th- We saw him out there. He okay. didn't catch a ball. I it don't think he was targeted. It could be Dante who contributed a little bit tonight. It could be so many different guys. Oh, no. All right. Well, I got to work on my mic here. You that means talk. I get to talk. Um, I'm going to go with where I think Ryan was going with this. And say, like, yeah, this was an ugly night overall for the offense. Well, I mean, compared to what we've seen the last couple of weeks. At the same time, though, perspective is important. And coming into the season, if if you had seen this offensive performance tonight and said that this is what you get every single game for the entire season, how disappointed are you really? Because the expectations weren't all that high. Um, And I think you could make a claim that this was about what the expectations were or maybe still exceeding expectations. Um, 138 uh, yards passing, 134 yards rushing. It was fairly efficient before those last couple of drives when really that's when the San Diego State defense broke through. Let me get a check in here real quick. Yep. We are good. All right, go back. We're good. (laughs) Oh, yeah. But uh, I I just think that to round everything out with what I was saying earlier, I I do want to point out, like, that defensive line from San Diego State, that is its strength. And the fact that they were able to make some plays against the Buffs, you don't love it. But two of the three defensive linemen were preseason all Mountain West first team. So there's that. I just, I you know, I think there's some upset players on offense tonight. Uh, Mm -hmm. And... I think they have a little bit of a claim. I just, I know the buffs went vanilla and that's what you wanted. Uh, and I think that's a fair take on your part. Um, but it just, it was a little too one dimensional for me. First of all, we said after week one, you can't live with 30 carries for Jarek Broussard Mm -hmm. in a game like this. You especially didn't need to do that. (laughs) Uh, and you could have gotten a shot Clayton involved. I mean, not, not could have, you should have. Yep. Yep. You Rashad Clayton should have seen the field. And we go don't get to see practice and that kind of stuff. And yeah. we did hear from the coaches that the bye week that was created by Arizona State canceling would be used to watch the running backs and see who performs the best and then decide who does get those second reps when uh, Jarek Broussard isn't on the field. Looks like it was Joe Davis who earned those seven carries for 10 yards tonight. I'd, I'd let somebody else give it a run next week. You've seen Mangum. You've seen Davis. I think it's time to try Ashad, right? Yeah. Just, again, Ashad Clayton needs needs to see the rock. Dimitri Stanley is your best wide receiver, in my opinion. He's so been great. He needs to get the rock as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, give Brendan Rice more opportunities. I mean, you can go down the list. Katie Nixon needs to touch the ball more. Yeah. Like, yeah. In, in the way that they used Katie Nixon tonight is not the proper way to use Katie Nixon. Drag routes. Drag if he runs day. a drag route on every single play for a whole game, I won't complain. Nope. And, and and if they really want to get cute and half of them are like a jet sweep motion and you give the ball to him once or twice during the game and half the time he's just yes. out there in the flat as an outlet, like 
I'm hoping that this was a warm-up game for KD coming back from the injury. And I'm also hoping that it was a game where Chev maybe didn't want to tip his hand and show yeah. exactly what KD is going to be used for. Uh, Jaron Mangum, not on the field once. No. And again, I mean, when he played, the, the coaching staff did say, like, he hasn't lived up to his standards. He hasn't, but he's better than seven carries for 10 yards. Yeah. So that's that's my one complaint tonight is just – get to move you know spread the ball around especially in a game like this where you you know it's essentially a non-conference early season game it's still only Mm -hmm. your third game of the year so get guys involved uh you know let guys get their confidence up i just i want to see more uh more guys touch the ball but again i understand that this was a vanilla game plan uh that didn't have much i mean the most misdirection you saw was bootlegs yeah that didn't even work yep and again, if this is what we see the rest of the season, that is a problem. That is a, a very, very bad thing, and we will address that if it happens. Assuming, though, that this was just a vanilla game plan because you didn't think you need to pull out all the stops and you wanted to save some of the things that you can do that you haven't put on tape yet, I'm, I, I, I like it. I, I like it. Is it just the Winsky, or does my shirt look 3D on camera? Uh, it's the Winsky. Okay. Yep. Kind of looks like that hand's coming out. Great to have this little check in though. My so shirt I know could what just I'm come with. out and grab you through the screen. Yeah. It kind of. All right. Three D. Okay. Allie's Ooh, on my side okay. here. Okay. All right. Has she had any Winskies? No. No. All right. Well, uh, any other takeaways tonight from you? I mean, we could go on with takeaways forever. Um, yeah. the defensive line and the run defense was. I, I don't know how else to describe it then. Yeah. Just uh, chef's kiss. What was the rushing stats? Um, what were the rushing stats? So San Diego State wound up having 31 carries for 79 yards, which, again, that is a great yeah, performance from the defense. The fact that I have to frame that as, it's all right, guys. Most of those came in garbage time, like when they said, it's third and 10 and we need to score here. So we're handing it off and they picked up seven yards because it felt like, I mean, in the fourth quarter, they were sitting on under 50 passing yards and under 50 rushing yards. Yeah. Yeah. That was a thing that happened. I think it was 60 passing yards, or was it? 50 rushing yards. Either Wound way up with 76 passing yards and 79 rushing yards. If you want to be mad at some, uh, at an offensive play calling performance, be mad at San Diego. <laughs> State. Like the buffs was <laughs> ugly. They were down two scores with three minutes left and ran the ball on third and ten. Yeah. That's going to happen tomorrow in the Broncos game. Oh, we're not hot. We'll San talk Diego's about that at the tailgate, the tailgate tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, The tailgate tomorrow, we get to dig into all of the Broncos stuff. 9.30 a.m., by the way. Yes. Uh, that, it, that, was, whew, yeah. that was rough on their part. But um, <sighs> they could not run the ball. They could not pass the ball. The Buffs absolutely put down the clamps. Uh, Tyson Summers kind of found, found a groove a little bit today, um, and he's got a good defense. He they've does. they've given up yards. Uh, you know, obviously the the second halves haven't been ideal, but that group can play, and you love to see it. You really do. Like it, it is just so much fun to watch that defense Be- because there's so many different things you can watch. Like it seems like on every play I'm thinking, okay, where's Nate? Nate's about to go make a play. But then you could also look at Mustafa. You could look at Terrence Lang. Like there's so many productive players on that defense and really just so many playmakers. That's what it is because that's what was missing last year. Like sometimes you get a Nate tackle for loss and then all of a sudden they're forced into a second 11, second and 12, second and 13 and, and fighting their way through trying to get a first down. This year you're seeing a whole lot more of that because it doesn't just have to be Nate. And and Mustafa is back to being himself. And and the whole defensive line from Terrence Lang and all those guys, they're looking a lot better. And, I mean, you have to shout out Carson Wells because he is doing what I think Buffs fans had hoped he'd be doing at this point in his career when he played like he did as a freshman. Yep. He, he was he was awesome. Um, he looks fast running down quarterbacks and, and running backs. He looks big. He is containing on the outside. Another thing that I was really proud of today is that the uh, the contain was great. You mm-hmm. know, they tried some trickery, trying to get around the edge, couple of reverses. Buffs didn't bite at all. Uh, did they? Did they allow a single big play in the entire game? I mean, they couldn't have because there weren't enough no. yards generated. 
What's no, the longest play? I can actually check. Yeah, tell me what the longest play San Diego State had from scrimmage was. Um, The longest passing play, they did have one of 17 yards, <laughs> and they had a 22-yard rush. You remember the little speed back got loose. That, that running back, by the way, I should say, long of 22 yards, six carries total. How many total yards do you think he had, Ryan? It's probably going to end up being less than 22. It's 18. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had five carries for negative four yards outside of that one. Wow. Uh. It was, um, and the buffs didn't really generate anything big either. There was that one Jarek Bouchard run, which was what? 30 something yards. Um, so yeah. you, d- you want to see them generate more big plays, but you love the fact that the defense did not give up next to anything big play wise. Yeah. Uh, that w- that was a very good game. Um, and, uh, we're going to have to go through and shout out some of our favorite players. We, we, we named some, um, but there are plenty of others that uh, are putting in noteworthy performances. Before we do that, though, we got to plug some stuff and uh, say that we here at DMVR are dreaming of a black Christmas. Do you guys need good ideas for Christmas? Do you just want to treat yourself? Well, we're excited to announce our Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. Black Friday's past. But it's still Black Friday weekend. You can still get in on all of these deals, um, including you get up to 80% off the entire store. Yes, that's up to 80%. If you spend $75 before taxes, you'll also get a $15 gift card that you can use starting on Tuesday. Um, and the best deal of all, you can get yourself a DNVR membership for $59.99 and you'll get a $60 gift card to the DNVR locker. Um, so many great deals. Which, and you can get that Pride and Tradition shirt. I know, which Pride is, and Tradition shirt. Uh, maybe we can bring on Ben. Yeah, Ben, come show off this shirt. Can we bring on oh, Ben? Oh, even better is the graphic. No, Ben, you're fine. Oh, we let's also have the, the gra- graphic. Yeah, it yeah, looks better look on the graphic. the graphic than it does on Ben. Okay, well, okay. Allie will yeah. adjust the camera to get Ben involved. Covered. Ben, get your microphone ready. Why doesn't it look that good on you, Ben? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, he might need help, Allie. Yeah, Allie, he doesn't know how to handle a microphone. Oh, don't break it. You're luck. You're you're lucky that you don't have to see this guy's. It's oh! <laughs> it almost it almost <laughs> fell on him. All right, Allie's come to save the day for Ben, um, <laughs> who is here with us. Look at him rocking that Pride and Tradition shirt. This is Ben Girding, by the way. Of uh, he's the DNVR Buffs intern, and he just went over to the uh, Buffs press conference. Well, he didn't go to it. It's all over Zoom. He went to the other side of the office. And um, <laughs> uh, I love to shake his confidence. This is exactly the Ben we needed. Um, we're going to hear all about that press conference, but we have to plug some more things. Um, so, Ben, sit there quietly. Don't break anything. <laughs> um, Breckenridge Brewery. Uh, oh. They're good. Uh, they're damn good. They're, they are. We haven't. I haven't heard the phrase "damn good beers" in too long. Where did that go? Are you still pulling that on the Broncos podcast? And I, I don't listen because it's sad. Yeah, I just walk around saying "damn good beers" all day, every day. Yeah, I mean it's the most <laughs> successful catchphrase I've ever come up with. Is it? Yeah. Wow. People you say work it on that. Mata's has like the ball is popping. Yeah. He has a uh, nug life. He, uh-huh. he he has so many. All I you- mean, I, well, not me, but a podcast that I was associated with came up with buff shit. Yeah, congrats on being on a podcast. <laughs> Shout out B-Bads. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, damn good beers, that's a, a world-renowned phrase. I really like it. So I don't know if you can hate on it. If really. I ever hear damn good beers, I'm thinking of Breckenridge beers. Exactly. Strawberry Sky, Colorado Core, damn Vanilla good. Porter Jr. Damn good. It's all damn good. And if you're uh, looking for some fun outdoor activities during the shutdown here in Denver, look no further. Because Breck has set up an awesome skating rink outside of the farmhouse it's only three dollars to skate with your own skates, or six dollars for skate rental. If you that, have your own skates, comment. I just want to know if anyone I know has their own skates. <laughs> I do. Shut up. No, I do. I wanted to play hockey. <laughs> You're a, telling me. We go to your apartment right now. You got a pair of skates. Uh, they're at my parents' house. Uh, they're, they are my skates though, and they are nice hockey skates too. I'll allow it. Yeah, my senior year of high school, started playing some men's league. Uh huh. How are you? I think he's That's here today, so I, I don't think fun. it went too yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, I had fun. Uh, so anyway, the buffs. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry Breckenridge for Brewery. having fun, Very good. Ben, what do you have to say? Yeah, um, a, a lot to say on the mic that's not broken. Um, for all the people at home that were wondering... 
Carl Durrell was on first, and, you know, like we had talked a lot about during the game when we were watching, like it's important to remember this team had 24 hours to prepare for, the, per, to prepare for this game. Carl Durrell mentioned that multiple times, talking about it was a good win, it was a difficult win. He mentioned multiple times, you know, we only had a day to prepare. Our guys did the best with what they could. Um, you know, so, so just that is important, especially coming from your head coach, and then also translated down to when we talk with Nate Landman and Jarek Broussard as well. So those are... You know, those are all your your key players that are all hitting on. It is super important for you to rail, realize, you as the fans, to realize we didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare. So temper your expectations. A 10-point win when you didn't even know who the opponent was until late Thursday night is an incredible feat. Hate mm-hmm. excuses from a coach after a loss. Love excuses <laughs> from a coach after a win. We're sorry we didn't win by more. Here's why. That yeah. uh, That's good. That feels good. They won by double digits. I know. This was a double-digit win. A six and a half point cover. Well, she got for us, Ben. Yeah. Um. So Nate Landman too. He had a lot of great quotes. Uh, first things first. I he, love to hear that. Yeah. So first thing he was asked. You know, the defense stepped up today. Only allowed ten points. He interjected. He's like, "Well, we only gave up three points." Damn right. Yeah. And, that and is I love Nate that. Lo- yep. uh, yes. I love it. He's got that intensity. He knows mm-hmm. what he's about. He's gonna he's gonna hit you in the mouth with his with his thoughts and and it really carries over. Um. He talked too about how they weren't able to finish games in the past, which was another big topic that he and Carl Durrell touched on. Um. At the end of the Stanford game, which feels like eternity ago um, at this point. But yeah, he said today was the first time where they played great defense throughout the game, which I mean, I would echo. They held San Diego State to barely over 150 total yards. Um, You know, and granted they had a quarterback that I'm not even sure should have been on scholarship if he was. But yeah, not a great offense, but yeah. still a, a great confidence booster for your team. So, yeah. Um, and the other last point on Nate Lamon, because, again, he gave gave us a lot of great quotes today. He was asked what revs his engine before his sacks. Great question. Great question. Great phrasing. Excuse me, what? He, <laughs> what revs his engine? You know, like a car. Vroom, vroom. Yeah. Just, <laughs> you heard of one of those, Ryan. Yeah. Ben. Oh, just seems like something Henry would ask a girl on Tinder. What revs your engine? <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> after I, making sure her profile after notes. that is going in the notes. <laughs> after making sure her profile checks out on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out they can see that. We'll probably never get back to that though. <laughs> back, back to Nate Lamb and um he did say, if I could have it my way, I'd make every single play on the field. Um he just he had a lot of confidence today, which is not something he's ever lacking. But again, it was just very straightforward as I'm a baller, and I'm not yeah. afraid to say it. You know, yeah, no, that's the best linebacker in the country. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the last notes too. Jarek Broussard. Um, one interesting quote from him. He said, "If someone were to ask you uh, before the season started, after three games, if you'd be over 300 yards, what would you say?" And he said, "I'd probably agree with them. I love football, and it's just something I take seriously." And it was just one of those quotes that were so in your face. Of you know. What would you say if someone asked you if you were playing really well? And he said, I'd agree because I'm capable of it, you know? (laughs) And and so it was just something like that. This team just has a lot of confidence. And, of course, Carl Durrell is going to be the kind of quiet, mild-mannered guy that he is. But with Lamon and Jarek Broussard, arguably your two pillars on either side of the ball coming out there with belief in themselves, belief in the team, they both complemented each the other side of the ball as well. Jarek talked about how the defense brings them energy as well. And so that's just super important, um, you know, in just – fostering that winning culture, which is something that obviously they haven't had since 2016 until now bowl eligible again. Yeah. Bowl eligible. Hmm. I just want I just want to say it again. Bowl <laughs> eligible. Who would have thought bowl eligible? You know, uh, the, the college bowls, uh, they, they tweeted out like their projections this week for uh, like, who's going to be playing in which bowl game. Got the Buffs in the Alamo Bowl playing Oklahoma. Not good enough. <laughs> I know, but isn't that great? It is. But also, I, not good enough. Not good enough. I, I don't enough. understand how you could make the reasonable argument that a team with a <laughs> loss, such as Clemson, is recognized. <laughs> Clemson in isn't even the best CU <laughs> in the country. <laughs> Trevor it's, it's Lawrence. Ridiculous. Yeah. I bet he couldn't even play. A, uh, never mind. <laughs> Honestly, Quarterback though, only. Uh, Alamo Bowl. I would have Dude, some bad memories. Stop with all this negativity. I know. This, this is the Buffs This is the Carl Durrell era. And, you know, where I come from, like Montana football, if you're 3-0, and we're raising banners already. <laughs> we are running around town saying this is the greatest team that's ever lived, and we're going to enjoy this run. It isn't like this hesitant, like, oh, I'm not so sure, you know, they only won by 10. Like, get hyped negative? about this. Because that's the first negative thing I think I've said in like a week. And it's too much negativity. Too much. I know, but it's not the first I've heard. 
It's just the first from you. Honestly, you didn't deserve that. The Alamo you Bowl. You just came at me. Sorry. <laughs> in a world in which we could actually travel to it, I would be hyped to go there again. Um, oh, CU fans basically true, own this place uh, down in San Antonio. I believe it's known as Mad Dog Tavern. Wow. I'm really going out on a limb guessing on what it's called. <laughs> um, but we were down there every single night for like seven nights in a row, just tearing it up. Uh, just d the whole place was dominated by CU fans every single night. So uh, we are part owners of the Mad Dog Tavern. <laughs> and I believe they would show us great hospitality if we went back to the Riverwalk. That is good to know. And I should say that like, I've, maybe I was a little bit too hard on Buffs fans. And so to balance that out, I will say a Buffs fans are a good time. The, the Probably oh. the best time. We, we yes. know how to party. Yep. 100% <laughs> yep. yep. the best time. Um, ooh. Oh, yeah. Good question about the bull opponent. Kind of covered that. Who do you think our bull opponent will be in the college football playoff? I'm probably <sighs> thinking Alabama. I think they'll be number one, though. <laughs> no, yeah, I was going to say, I think they're going to be two. So I think they're going to probably play Ohio State um, at three, which is which yeah, is fine. Man. Ohio State's super very beatable. overrated. Yeah, very beatable. <laughs> Justin Fields is trash. So I mean, on a scale of like zero to Tam or Sam Neuer. Tam Neuer. Tam, Tam, Neuer. Tam Neuer. Tam Neuer. That like, shouldn't definitely Were you be trying done. to mix him with Tim Tebow? We don't need to talk about Tim oh, Tebow. Oh, we need to talk about Tim Tebow. Can we talk about, though, the little shovel pass? If Patrick Tebow, Mahomes, if Patrick Mahomes <laughs> makes that throw, oh yeah, Sports Center number one. Trevor Lawrence, if any of those guys, yeah. like like obvious, Sam Neuer, you know, he is what he is. We gotta see. He's played three games. He's looked very good. He made a mistake, whatever, but he does do a lot of really great things that a lot of quarterbacks aren't capable of. He has shown that. You know, there aren't a lot of quarterbacks. There's maybe, like, I, I could see Jaden Daniels making that shovel pass. I could see maybe that like the the freshman at uh, Washington State, Delora. But but like seriously, this is stuff that you don't see a lot. And the decision making for the most part, the zip on the ball, it's it's every single game that that the first time he throws a ball, it's just on a line. You're like, wow, like, he, he has does that, have that arm strength. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have opposite hash out route <laughs> arm strength, but almost no, no one, one does. does. Yeah. And and you know what? I'm all right with him checking to see if he does. It was a heat check, you say? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad we learned never to throw that again. <laughs> yeah. Sam Neuer plays like like it's backyard football, but in a in a fun way. He's ridiculously talented. He has all the arm strength to make probably 99 percent of those throws. Um, so you know, it's just fun to watch because you see a play like that where you know you've got pressure on the outside. He's got to make a play. He steps up, avoids the rush, and he's got a defender in his lap, and he is still able to just kind of flip the ball forward. It's just that kind of I don't even know if it's athleticism or just mm -hmm ability to just go out there and make a play is really respectable and something to give buffs fans a lot to buy into yeah so all three of cu's wins have something in common they sure do don't they ucla yes and where stanford is, yeah, yeah. san diego state what do those three teams have in common ben They're, what is it located near bad in and out burgers okay come on oh, That's a start all in and outs are bad got, in got and a little too yeah. cute there <laughs> got a little too cute there there it is ah oh. Wow. Buffs cannot lose to a team from California this year, in, unless, of course, they meet them in the college football playoff, uh, which would require a lot of hard work for USC. I guess there's that big, like, week seven question mark. What's, oh, that's true. What even is week seven that we are still about to... You know, they we'll they still out. could meet a, another California school, but as of now... And I sure hope they do. California's under new ownership. I hope they do meet a California school, because I think we know what uh, what's going to happen here. Oh. I love this uh, this unfiltered optimism. <laughs> I know, isn't it fun? This yeah. is what I'm There's saying. no like, reason to hate. They're <laughs> undefeated. There is no evidence that a Carl Durrell Colorado Buffaloes team can lose, and I think we should just ride that as far as long and as far as it takes us. It's a good time. Honestly, that's what I'm all about is just enjoying it. You have to like. Usually the Buffs are only undefeated when they're like one and zero against CSU or two and zero against CSU in Nebraska. Um, mm -hmm. so uh, well, three and oh is something new, um, <laughs> because last year they lost their third game, didn't they? they yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Air Force. Air Force yeah. yeah. And then the year before I they were three, the yeah, they ended up being five and oh that year, but they didn't yeah. clinch bowl eligibility, which they did this year. So this is better than that year. And, and it's, it is mathematically impossible for the Buffaloes to lose seven straight this season. Yeah. So, so we don't even have to worry about that. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, let's move along. But but with Good the job, same Heather. optimism, I know I never keep us on track. Usually somebody else has to like step in and do my job for me. My That's job is to break the microphone and sit here, look at the camera a couple times. So I'm doing okay. Good job. Henry. Yeah, we almost broke the microphone. Henry, why are you on track? 
Oh, we got off track. Um, well, the draft. No, I I just texted you to. G- g- get I know, on track. and I checked it, and I was casual, and I was thinking the same thing. And it's time to get to the draft king of the game. Uh, that's Nate Landman. Draft <laughs> kings. Oh, I thought it was king gonna be draft, Gustav. Is the draft kings sports book draft king of the game? All it's those just things. The draft kings king of the game. Draft kings king of the game. Okay, well, look we'll at s- that guy, dude. Uh, that I, I was is. There that, day. that is the like perfect star linebacker look it sure that's, is look at that jaw shape the shoulders that that's that that guy has star linebacker that guy and you just imagine the neck roll right there behind it yep he's in people's mm. nightmares he, yeah he should be and for Read a off whole bunch stats. of reasons 11 total tackles nine solo tackles three and a half tackles for loss three sacks a pass breakup um you know what would happen if nate landman was the broncos quarterback tomorrow Dub. 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 <laughs> Dub. Exactly. Glad we're all on the same page. Ali, can you, can you agree real quick? Just say dub. She gave, gave us a thumbs up. Sure, whatever. Okay. Nate Lamon, so good. I think I covered most of my thoughts earlier. The, the, you can't ask much more out of him. You know, pass coverage, could he be a little bit more mobile there? Sure. But he does seem like he has improved there this season, and that's not who he is. You know, you're not going to put him in that role. Like, if, if we're talking next-level football players, he's more of your blitzer. You know, he's more of the get-into-the-backfield type. Like, you're lining him up in the middle and getting him after the quarterback. Like, if you're putting him in coverage more than a few times a game, you're probably not using him perfectly anyway. And, and so I, I think that for all of the, the hate that he sometimes gets because of some limitations that people want to find somewhere else... You can't let that overshadow that I think un- indisputably he is the best run stuffing linebacker in the country. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I haven't seen every linebacker in the country, but I can say I haven't seen anyone that's better than him so far. As as the draft podcast guy, the guy whose job it is once a week to talk about all the linebackers in the country, Nate Landman is really 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 good. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, look at the stat line. He talked about again today. He said, "If I could have it my way, I'd make every single play on the field." I don't think you I can think he make. Did. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I don't think he could do much <laughs> more out there. I mean, uh, he was in the backfield constantly. He had a nose for the ball. There was even a play where he was blocked into the turf and had the you know the the mind awareness to to look up and just grab the quarterback's shoes to get another sack. It's just that awareness, that level of intensity is something that's it's super impressive in. Again, I haven't seen every middle linebacker in the country, but I'd be hard-pressed to say there's anybody better than him. He has uh, ill intentions every single time the ball is snapped. Mm-hmm. The the <sighs> play that, that illustrates this the best is he is trying to chase down the quarterback on the outside, and in between him and the quarterback is a running back. And instead of trying to go around the <laughs> running back, he literally tries to play pool using the running back as a cue ball, <laughs> trying to throw him into the quarterback. Uh, it didn't work, but they still got the contain on the outside. But it's just like he, he on every single play, he's trying to run through somebody, not run into somebody, not not create contact to run through somebody, and it creates problems. No running back has any interest in blocking him because it's gonna hurt. Yeah, like yeah. that's what that's what he wants to make sure. Yeah. If you try to block me, it's gonna hurt you. And yep. as the game wears on, that takes an emotional toll on anyone who's, whose job is to block them. Because in most cases, it's going to have to be a back who's picking him up coming through. And that's going to hurt them more than any carry they have all game is Nate Landman smashing into them at full speed, just trying to knock them on their ass. Yeah, seriously. And in a down year for tackling in college football, that is so valuable to have. Um, I think we've covered the Nate Landman thoughts, but we're going to keep talking about guys who really impressed us tonight. Before we jump into all those helmet stickers, though, reminder, if you're watching on YouTube, which is where you should probably go because it's a lot just better than Periscope, I think we're allowed to say that. Um, if you are watching there, though, press the like button, uh, subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that kind of stuff. We really appreciate it. And also uh, leave your questions in the chat uh, because we're about to get into all those in just a couple minutes here. First, though, helmet stickers. We've already covered Nate Lamb and who impressed you, Ryan? Well, since you're going to give me first, I'll take Derek Broussard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he is he just eats up yards Mm -hmm. he's like a lawnmower the way he eats up grass like he is that his new nickname the lawnmower (laughs) please no (laughs) Hmm. i don't hate it (laughs) yeah 
Oh, sure. Rick, I never let's, told let's my. I never weeks. gave my Nate Landon. Oh no, you didn't. What's a Nate Landon? <laughs> I've been trying to get this to catch on for three years now. Yeah. Landmine. It's very good. He blows everything up. It. He blows everything up. Plus, in case you didn't pick up on it, basically his name. <laughs> exactly. Landman. <laughs> Landmine. <laughs> It's perfect. Does Anyways. that make sense to the viewers? Could somebody chime in, make sure that was cleared up? Because yeah. I for sure was confused. Thank Very you. good. <laughs> we'll uh, need some reviews on that nickname in the chat, too. Jarek Broussard, a.k.a. The Lawnmower, absolutely <laughs> just mowing down defenses. I believe he's averaging right around 150 yards a game now so, um, with 180, right? He had 180, then 120, now 130. So he ended up at 124 yards because oh, those last two drives were... Because they telegraphed yeah. every run back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so 124, so he's probably down uh, sub 150 at this point, but um, you'll, you'll live with that. Yeah. He, His vision, his patience, his explosion, it's everything you ask for in a college running back. Just a running back, period. Uh, and it's an absolute luxury to have him. Like, no one saw this coming. Nope. <laughs> and now he is arguably one of the best running backs in the Pac-12. I guess not arguably. No, he, he is, is one of the ru best is. running backs in the Pac-12. He's arguably the best running back he's, in the Pac-12. He's yeah, seriously. Like you, you look at the Oregon running backs and say like, oh, they're really impressive. They're like others around the conference, but yeah, Jarek Broussard is very firmly in that conversation. Has to be the leader for first team All Pac-12. I think like Jamar Jefferson's numbers. Yeah, I'd be curious. I think he's he, probably ahead. He, that's why I say arguably, yeah. just because Jamar Jefferson is <laughs> yeah. absurd. He's carrying that team. Quite literally. Yes. And it was, uh, I, I'm happy for him because yeah. he's awesome. He is. That's why I picked him up in the DMVR Madden League. <laughs> oh. And then he was stolen off my practice squad. But Madden, oh, that's not the point. Scene. Um, Jarek Broussard, though. I'll go to you, Ben, with this question. Are they asking him to do too much? Are they giving him the ball too much and putting him in harm's way too much and kind of limiting what they could get out of him going forward? Today, yes. Um, th this was a game where you had more talent. You knew you were going to go in there and just be able to punch San Diego State in the mouth and win off of that alone. Again, it wasn't the prettiest of games. You didn't have long, elegant touchdowns. You didn't have a 55-yard touchdown to Dimitri Stanley like you did in the Stanford game. So, you know, you knew that you were just going to have to kind of grind, get done with this game, and move on to Arizona because also this game doesn't impact conference sta standings. You True. could win or lose by 50, and it's not going to help you get to the Pac-12 title game. So in this game in particular, I look at those last two drives where Jarek Broussard carried the ball uh, probably five times total. All of them for, were for a loss because I think the only gain was that Neuer QB sneak. And that dropped his averages down. Before those two drives, he was averaging about 4.8 yards per carry, up over 132 yards. He lost 12 yards. His average goes sub four. And that's, you know, that kind of hurts from a stat sheet viewer perspective. But also, that's five extra hits that you could have given to a guy like Joe Davis, who hasn't, who didn't do anything, you know, throughout the whole game. But if you knew going into those two drives, Fair. which, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's sad to say, but seven carries, mm -hmm. 10 yards, you know. Yeah. So if you're going into those two drives and your only purpose is to chew clock, which clearly it was, they weren't trying to be creative. Give the ball to somebody else because Jarek Broussard is your workhorse, not yeah, just for the Yeah, but you trust Jarek, and that's what it that's comes down thing. to. Because, you know, if you give the ball to Melvin Gordon late in the game and he fumbles it on the goal line, you look really silly. You sure do. Um, so, in the in the Buffs case, I'm with you. I want other people to get involved. Late in the game, I want the ball in Jarek's See, hands. I'm thinking, why not Jaron Mangum? Because that's, that's fine, a, too. That's a, that's a guy who, if you run Jaron Mangum correctly – Put it in an eye formation. Let him fall forward for a yard, you know, because he's a bigger body. He's going to be able to do that better. Um, yeah, I'm not saying maybe throw out a shot Clayton in the very end of the game because I think that's risky, but I think a shot Clayton should have gotten a couple carries Absolutely. in between because he's a more dynamic playmaker. So I think the distribution of these carries needs to look different moving forward because, again, this isn't just a this-year play. You've got two more regular season games your Week 7 game, which could be a Pac-12 title game, and then a bowl game. So you've got four more games this season, but Jarek Broussard, his eligibility carries over. You've got next year and the year after to look forward to, and if you keep giving him the ball 30, 35 times a game, that is going to wear him down significantly. I mean, at least you would expect, well, unless he's a Derrick Henry type. And he's not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> In case you hadn't looked at the guy. <laughs> um, also, it's not good for his draft stock. Uh, and one of the reasons Philip Lindsay didn't get drafted is because he was used too much at Colorado. Uh, and, and it's a dumb reason because he's clearly shown he can handle it. But it is one of those things where it's it's good thing for you if Jarek Broussard gets drafted. And if he keeps producing at this rate, 
and you make sure he doesn't have too much tread on the tires at the end of things, he'll be in the NFL. Yep. He'll get a shot in the NFL. He definitely will. So you have to think of all these things. And in a game like today, like I get it. When you are in a dogfight with USC or one of these other teams, just give the ball to your best players and mm-hmm. say, F it. In a game against San Diego State, which is essentially, you know, a free game, use the other guys. Get a shot Clayton involved. Maybe he breaks one for 30 yards, and instead of tweeting about how he needs to get the rock, he's excited, and he's tweeting how much fun he's having, and he's tweeting about how they're 3-0. and And, you know, like I, I often compare being a coach um, to, like, roller coaster tycoon or like i one love of the- <laughs> that game that game okay here's the real game though there's a ski resort tycoon okay yeah never made it onto max we only had apple products growing up that means i never got to play it except for like i, I had this weird just like- relationship with this weird well we don't need to go into exactly i saw it once don't ever say the sentence played. We only had Apple products growing yeah, up. Again. It's like, <laughs> like wow, subtle <laughs> flash. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, just like that. That's the way things. Are. Like it was the ecosystem. Anyways, like, but- I equate <laughs> being a coach to playing roller coaster tycoon because you have to keep everyone happy. If you raise the concession prices too high, now the people aren't happy. If you don't have enough staff there, then the lines get too long. All these things you're you're juggling as a coach. Not only are you trying to win games, you're dealing with a hundred some players that you're trying to get on board all with the same message. And sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and do things because you know that they're going to pay off for you long term, even though it might not be the best thing to do right now. Like anytime the buffs line up, the best thing for them to do is give the ball to Derek Broussard. Yeah. But sometimes you just have to say, I'm gonna give the ball to Ashad Clayton because that because it's gonna help me out this week in practice when I say, all right, you got two carries this week, Ashad, you work hard. You show me that you can pass block. We're going to triple that next week. We'll give you six carries. So, um, just little things, little critiques, uh, that I'd like to see worked on. You, you got to spread the ball around just a little bit more, especially against a team like San Diego state. Yep. And, and to be honest, I, I agree with you guys, but just to play devil's advocate, I'll, I'll throw this out there. The game plan today really, really looked like it was, We don't have time to put in a game plan, so we're not going to get too cute. Our game plan is we are better than the other team, and so we are just going to bank on that, getting us a win, and it worked. When you start taking off your best players, that's when that game plan starts to become really risky. And and so while I, I definitely agree with you guys, I do think that it's important to realize that that is the situation, and you know what? They got the dub and I'll give him some credit for that. Uh, here's the question, though. I think it was 53 total rushes today, 45 in week two, 59 in week one. So let's say they have about 50 rushes per game. How do you guys want to see those broken down? Um, and that includes Sam Neuer. Yeah, I would go um, like 20 to 25 carries for Jarek. Okay. Uh, and then you've got 30 more carries to work with. Yep. Um. I would spread those out evenly between Jaron Mangum, uh, Joe Davis, and and Ashad Clayton. So mm-hmm. you can give each of those guys 10, and obviously that's not the way it's going to work out every week. Yep. One of them plays a little better. They're going to get the lion's share of those mm-hmm. leftover 30 carries. Um, but, you you know, you probably do give 25. I, You're giving I think 20, so. Uh, it's a lot. I like that answer a lot better than 20. It's a lot. It's a short it is, season. It is. It's a shortened season, and this is your bread and butter. Um, so 25. There's 15 left over. Those are going to be divided. You know, you you try to work those guys in in the first half. That was right, right? Oh, there's 25 left over. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I see, I <laughs> saw those eyes over there. Nerd. You can just Nerd. step in and tell me. <laughs> Nerd. Uh, 20, Nerd. There's 25 left over. You can split those up evenly or give it to whoever's running the best. But give all those guys a chance in the first half. Give them a couple carries. See who's working. Um, clearly tonight it was not Joe Davis, yet – no one else got a carry, right? Nope. Just two, just two running backs. Uh, right. I believe that's correct. Yeah, I don't like that. Nope. Yeah. If you're averaging a little over one yard per carry, someone else has got to get a look. Yeah. Yep. I, I agree completely. I think Jarek right around twenty twenty five, depending on what the game looks like. I think you bank on Neuer having ten rushing attempts, and I think that's obviously a combination of taking sacks. Um, you know, based on the way colleges yeah. uh, count, count statistics. But Say no also, sacks because it's actually like fifty three. Call three of them sacks fifty. Okay. Um, yeah. Honestly, seven to ten carries still for Neuer. I think you have 
you can bank on calling some some more of those quarterback powers like we saw in the red zone that got him into the end zone. Um, some read option stuff, I think, to, to keep the defense honest. And then also, I think you have to bank on him having two or three where he just rolls out and, you know, goes into scramble mode. Um, and then, yeah, I, I completely agree. Just kind of divide it up amongst the other ones. I, I, I think it's worth noting still, though, that we talk about Ashad Clayton and wanting to get him the ball more. But they had an open competition last week. And it's clear that Joe Davis was the guy in practice. Now, it obviously didn't translate to the game. And I think you have to still trust the young guy that was highly recruited and get him in there. But I don't know if there's – I don't I don't want to call it a conspiracy theory or whatever, but he's got one carry for four yards this season. That's got to be because of something, you know? Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, a tinfoil hat theory? Oh, God. That was a great pull. I can't Go believe ahead, that ben. thing just sits that back just there. right there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what's your tinfoil hat? I, I just, I think he might not be ready and maybe he doesn't know that, you know, maybe he's, cause obviously he's talking like he doesn't, wait, what are you laughing at me for? <laughs> What do you mean? What am I laughing at you for? Does this not what make did, my hair look good? I think it looks great. This is the new profile picture I was hoping to get for this week. Good. Um, I'm glad we figured that yeah, out. No, I mean, look, not every guy is just going to walk on the stage. <laughs> Henry just and refuses yeah. to take you seriously while you're wearing that. Not, not every guy is going to walk on campus and immediately be, be yeah. ready to play. <laughs> I, so one thing I just want to say, uh, one thing I want to say about that my is that the, the coaches uh, need to do a better job communicating that if that's the case. Because he yeah. clearly doesn't understand that. Yeah. He doesn't feel that way. Uh, and I understand why he doesn't feel that way. He's an extremely talented player. Mm -hmm. So I think he needs to touch the ball. You're right. There's something going on. There's a reason. It's not just, you know, they don't like him personally. There's a reason behind the scenes. Maybe he's not, you know, I, I see Carl Durrell as a guy, especially coming from the NFL, where this is, this drives fans crazy. If you can't block, if you can't protect the passer, you do not play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. It's simple as that. You don't play. Uh, and I just wonder if that's the way that Carl Durrell sees things. And he's saying, you know what? We're not playing guys that can't that can't uh, hold their own in pass pro. So learn it or sit. But to me, it doesn't. It doesn't. It feels like there's a communication breakdown there, where Ashad doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. At the same time, though, Jarek Broussard blew a pass protection. Well, blowing game with a sack. it is different than if you do it in practice or not. Fair. That is a good point. That's what it comes down to. That's the coaches have to trust you based on what you do in practice. It is all about practice. And if you blow it in the game, you're gonna, probably going to get chewed out on the sideline, but you're still going back in because they know that you're capable. If you aren't able to do it in practice, if you're not able to identify who's coming, if you're not able to get over there in time, if you're not willing to stick your head in there and pop somebody, uh, then you don't play. Like Philip Lindsay mm -hmm. is not a perfect pass protector. No, but he is 100% willing to do so mm -hmm. and he wants to do so and he wants to be great at it. So he does it in practice. They trust him to go out there on the field and maybe this coaching staff doesn't trust him as much as previous coaching staffs because we're seeing him not be on the field as much as he True. should be. But we know that Philip Lindsay wants to do it. He's fine with doing it. He doesn't. He's not afraid of running into he someone bigger than him. Get run over as many times <laughs> as they tell him to go get run over. Yep. Uh, there was a, a, an old anecdote uh about uh philip Lindsay trying to block deforest buckner when he was at <laughs> oregon and like he got absolutely crunched just just bulldozed yeah he does he doesn't have a chance yeah he does that, he, that is no, in case yeah. you have never watched philip Lindsay play that is not yeah, his game that's a featherweight against a heavyweight <laughs> yeah and uh an nfl caliber first round pick heavyweight while, while we're at it uh and phil got up and started talking crap to him so like that, you know, he want he wants he wants the smoke. Uh, he wants yep. the smoke. You gotta want the smoke. I don't know if I, I don't know if that's a problem with the shot, but he gives off some diva like tendencies. I think today's uh, good Twitter players rant does not. Yeah, good players often help. do. Yeah, and diva doesn't always translate to pass protection. Yep. I will maybe maybe you're like making us a little bit I of a am, leap. I am, but it's not a it's not a huge leap. I, I'm just I'm trying to connect dots here. Yep. Um, you can give me the tinfoil hat if you want. Please don't. Ooh, yeah. uh, <laughs> don't and uh, that, th that's just what I'm thinking. <laughs> Darrell, NFL guy, pass pro, NFL, It's all it goes hand in hand. So uh, Joe Davis, on the other hand, strikes me as a guy who probably does his pass pro in, in practice. <laughs> he sure does. Um, and, and here's one more note on that. Tonight, we saw a lot of Joe Davis. Before that, we saw a lot of Jaron Mangum. Neither of the guys had a whole lot of success. Maybe the coaching staff looks at tonight and says... 
you know what? Joe Davis really didn't have many opportunities um, because of what was given to him by his offensive line and maybe roll with it again. But I do think there is one more option um, to, to find a, a second running back who can produce consistently. And I think that it, when we play uh, or when we see Arizona next week, I think that we'll see Colorado go out there um, with a Shaw Clayton being the next guy up. And I could be wrong. That's just a gut feeling. Um, but it does kind of feel like it's time to see what you've got because you haven't been able to work anything else out. Completely um, agree. You just got to let the kid run in a game yep. and just see what happens. Because one carry to this point, it's not, an, it's not a big enough sample size to know what you have. Yards per carry better than what they've gotten out of the other guys so <laughs> far this fair. season. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, let's... Uh, Let's keep going with these helmet stickers real quick. We got to go rapid fire because we spent way too long on Jarek Broussard. Also, wow, that was a big helmet sticker. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's whole decal. Yeah. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> seriously. He's got a whole nother logo. Um, Not just uh, Jarek. You guys spent like 30 minutes just talking about Nate. Did you see him play though? I did. No, I'm not saying it's Nate, wrong. helmet sticker. Nate, Nate deserves another helmet. You know what? He deserves he deserves a neck roll sticker. Ooh, we sh he should get like good. a like some sort of like vanity neck roll sticker off the back. Like he should get landmine across the back of that sticker. Yes. Or across the back of the neck roll. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Who else? Uh, Carson Wells. Yep. Absolutely. He he is really really good. You can give as much credit to Nate Lamb and the rest of these guys as you want, but this is a great linebacking group. That's what we're seeing. And, you know, Akil Jones, he's had some struggles in coverage. It happens. And I think that that's something that the Buffs have decided that they are willing to live with because of what he provides um, in terms of the running game. But uh, this group as a whole has been so productive this season. Um, should say also, that's Tyson Summers coaching inside linebackers, Brian Michalowski coaching outside linebackers, and I've been really impressed with all of them. Carson Wells in particular, um, probably the leader. No, I mean, he can't be most improved player because Sam Neuer and Jarek for <laughs> we'll, we'll find awards for everybody. We'll mm -hmm. find awards for everybody. But Carson Wells has taken a huge step forward this Absolutely. season. Um, ben, helmet sticker. Yeah, I'm going to go there with Sam Neuer. You know, he caught, caught a lot of flack yeah. on that out route. Um, you know, as, as just a true fan of quarterbacks, I tend to want to blame everybody other than the quarterback. That so, one was on him. Yeah. <laughs> questionable, <laughs> questionable play call, but that's why I'm moving on because I don't have a good defense for it. He's still, I think he's still showing signs of, of progression, and definitely this wasn't his best game of the season because, nope. you know, last time out against Stanford, he had four total touchdowns. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I love about Sam Neuer is he's willing to just go out there and put his body on the line, kind of like Nate Lamb, in which, again, he might be taking too many hits. You don't like to see your quarterback's jersey that covered in dirt and grass stains. But he's he's showing just a passion and, and a desire to – not just score, but to you know to make plays and to to go out there and fight for his teammates and and that's just super admirable. And then you go to to the playmaking ability, like that shovel pass for the touchdown, like the QB power that you ran. You know he just opens up your offense and he's taking advantage of those opportunities. So you know quarterback, it's the most position or most valuable position that's out there, and he is certainly doing everything he needs to to you know earn this job moving forward and keep propelling the Buffs to wins. Yeah. Um, Ryan, um, I have to give one to L. Chenault, who looked like uh, <laughs> I'm glad you his took brother out porn. there today. Uh, I love just looking at the stat sheet and seeing that L. Chenault was the leading receiver and Katie Nixon was the number two receiver. It, it feels right. Yeah, it feels <laughs> yeah. right. Um, so Levante, he was ball, he was a baller out there. Yep. Um, weirdly enough, he caught the ball in a lot of situations where I would have expected it to be Dimitri Stanley. But there was no situation where he let it down. You know, he didn't have any drops that I remember. Um, he played really well. And he was open. He made plays. And he looks like a playmaker. He's nothing like LaVisca uh, <laughs> other than his name. Yep. But he is a legitimate Pac-12 receiver. And that's exciting to see for a guy that young. Um, so love seeing that. Six catches, 64 yards, average of 10 yards per catch. Um, he had the longest catch of the night for the Buffs with 18 yards. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for him. And speaking of LaVisca Chenault, Brendan Rice, between there being an L yeah. Chenault on the stat sheet <laughs> and there being a number two who looks like a beast with the ball in his hands on the other side, it's, it's kind of fun. It is so much fun. Um, I'll throw one more out there. Curtis Appleton has not been appreciated yet. You know, you could go a bunch of ways with this last helmet sticker. Mustafa deserved it. Terrence Lang, I thought, Gustav. had a great game. 
Joshka Gustav. We love Joshka <laughs> Gustav. Don't have time to dig into that, but we do love Joshka Gustav. We don't know um, why, but we do. <laughs> Curtis Appleton filling in for Chris Miller, the only guy listed on the depth chart at Star. Uh, there was like, transfer things that happened to put him there. There was the injury of Chris Miller. Obviously, he's had to fill in, mm -hmm. and he's been able to play that role. And tonight he got his interception uh, to seal the game, to end it. And I think that that's something he deserves. I think that after the work that he's put in, it's good to see somebody like that get rewarded after playing well, filling in. Um, and uh, shout out Curtis Appleton. All right, that's going to do it for helmet stickers. Um, we're going to get to questions next. So get all those in in the chat, and we will go through every single one of them. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. I know. <laughs> that was just for you, Allie. <laughs> but um, until... Uh, until those are Ryan. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm not yeah, the only sure. one who breaks mics around here. Let that nope. be known. Know. Mics are yeah. still fully you functional. You and Winsky over there. Yeah, how'd that go? <laughs> the, heavy pour. The Winsky. Yeah, went fantastic. Does <laughs> <laughs> it look like the one? <laughs> I'm kind of parched, honestly. Yeah, I wish I had another one. Uh, um. Would you like the first question, or do you have to do? No, a he's got to do it. We got to talk to. It's we only got... going to take him twelve minutes to get to the right place. <laughs> well, it turns out the iPhone you don't have all the tabs. Turns but... out Ben and I have been talking plenty. When we talk, then you get prepared for when you do that. I well, then I get prepared for what I have to say, it's which right, is I'll that Curtis you. Appleton deserves respect. Okay, but moving on. You know what? Here's better than what's on the paper. Um, oh, tinfoil. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, not tinfoil hat. <laughs> Because this it, this is not a conspiracy. It's not. Strava Craft Coffee is one of the greatest things that has been creative, created for people like Who's me. Who's the one drinking whiskey? <laughs> I you know what this does to me. You <laughs> saw me. You saw me before I got this at halftime. It hits. It hits. It's it good hits. Stuff. It does its job. Um, if you guys are looking for just really good coffee, here's one to check out. Strava Craft Coffee. If you're looking for CBD, you want to put CBD in your body because it's good for you in like dozens of different ways that are scientifically proven and uh, reviewed and everybody says that it's true. Um, so you have to believe it. Um, it is good. And you can get it if you use code DMVR20. You'll get 20% off your first purchase from uh, Strava Craft's website. They'll ship it straight to you. You can get the grounds. You can get the beans. You can get the cake cups. They're all super good. And uh, if you really like it, which you do, um, you can subscribe and you can get it every two, three, four, six, or eight weeks um, with your subscription. The best part is you'll get 20% off every single time. You don't have to like order. You don't have to think about it because coffee is something that everybody drinks every day or they're weird. And so just make sure that it's right there and you don't have to think about it. No more going to grocery store, running out, any of that stuff. And uh, it's really good. As you can tell, I'm having the time of my life. Strava Craft Coffee and also kind of the buffs. Um, like and that fans Joseph seen during his first win. Sergio, <laughs> first Sergio like, he is having the time of his life. <laughs> uh, that's Henry. That's Strava Craft Coffee. That's that could be all of us if we all just drank more Strava Craft Coffee. Um, Amen. Questions, Ali? Do we have any questions? Yes, of course we do. Yeah, because we've been asking for them for an hour and a half. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Okay. The first question is from Go Buffs on Twitter. He says, oh. which statement is the most accurate? Nate Landman is the best middle linebacker in the Pac-12. Nate Landman is the best middle linebacker in America. Nate Landman is the best middle linebacker in, in the history. World. Oh, I know. I was just going to say Nate Landman best at anything dead or alive. Are there any, says no. Are there any middle linebackers outside of America? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that there was like the Japanese football championship. Yes. There, well, there's a whole World Cup of football. Um, the U.S. But should there be? Usually wins. I think always wins. Okay. Yeah. Really? With so some high school. Next question you, is, Allie. what do you guys like? Um, the answer was C, by the way. C, by the way. The, does the camera flip it? Yeah. Um, what, what do you guys like Landman, Johnson, Lang do with eligibility, return or go NFL? Landman's probably gone. Mustafa's probably gone. Uh, they've hit the point in their careers where they've done what they need to do. If they wanted to come back and they want to enjoy another year and, and run it back, I would love it. And I think bus fans would love it. And I think that Colorado would have a chance to really 
really, really, really make noise next year. Because with all the things that are happening right now, what CU does is going to get kind of overlooked for whatever reason. They can go undefeated and not make the college football playoff. That's not true going forward. Um, I think that Terrence Lang is probably back, though he does have all the tools, and he's finally letting those show. Not, did he make a lot of plays today? He made a couple. It's more just like the big physical presence and yeah. demanding double teams and doing that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's I, tough for a guy like Nate Landman to want to come back after is. a season like this. It is. Because all he does is put his body on the line every play. And so, like, eventually an NFL team is going to see that and love it. Mm-hmm. But the more that he does it, the less that they'll love it. It's true. So, to me, it would make sense for him to go. But he also strikes me as the kind of guy who would say something like, like we have unfinished business here. Let's go win. To let's it. go win some real stuff this yeah, year. Yeah. So uh, that's that's the hope. But just in terms of the way that he plays, the less mileage, the better when you go to the NFL as mm-hmm. a player like that. I mean, the only thing I was going to add on to that is just there's not much more for them to prove at mm-hmm. this level. I mean, you know, Nate Lamb, he's the king of the game today. He could reasonably be the king, be the king of the game every single game just because. He's doing that night in and night out. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there's just really not much more for him to to do on this level before he's ready to to take it up a notch. It's taken record-breaking performances thing. to beat him out for king of the game up to this point. Yes, exactly. How good is the Buffs' front seven? Very. <laughs> yes. It's uh, it's an 11 out of 10. Wow. Maybe on 12. A, on, a, on a Pac-12 scale? I, honestly, I, there's nobody I would take over the bus front Not seven, in the and and yes, I you I'm, would take Alabama's front. No, no, seven in the, I thought you were talking. In the okay, in the they're conference. having a down year. <laughs> we're just <laughs> gonna say they're having a down year. No, for for a Pac-12 standard, it's a really good front seven. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and especially with Oregon. Not having its best season I mean, this they got season. gashed up last night. They did. And, and they have guys they who can make Oregon some State. plays and guys in that front seven you really like. But, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. I think that Colorado is number one as of right now. Yep. Okay. Um, This one is for Ryan because we were talking about it earlier. Silver Buff is asking, was the playbook purposefully limited or is this 2018 Chev? So this is like classic Buff's fan scorned lover syndrome and i'm not saying silver buff specifically yeah but it was all over twitter tonight oh god here we go again mm-hmm. with chev uh and i just i refuse to not give him the benefit of the doubt on this one i mean they found out about this well like eating thanksgiving <laughs> dinner with their families on thursday night i can only assume because that's yeah. what i was doing yeah um and so they had i mean i'm sure they stayed up all night Thursday night preparing. Mm -hmm. They prepared for, you know, but again, they weren't able to talk to the kids until Friday. So they talked to the players on Friday. They came up with a game plan. They had, if they wanted to install a game plan, they had to come up with it between the end of their Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday night when they were full of tryptophan and, and bring it to the players by Friday. So they probably stayed up until God knows when on Thursday night, 4 a.m. If they could handle it after all that Turkey and, installed that game plan on Friday to play today. It's in like, like I said yesterday, being around those coaches yesterday was probably the most miserable thing in the world Yep. because coaches value time maybe more than anyone in the world. And when you tell them you've got 24 hours to prepare for a game, not even because really you had to install the entire game plan in a matter of 12 hours. Yep. I'm giving them full benefit of the doubt on this one. I think they just said, okay, here's what we do well. Let's go try to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so 2018 Chev, you know, his biggest problem was going east and west uh, against teams that were bigger, stronger, and faster than the buffs. And I didn't see that tonight. That wasn't the problem tonight. The problem tonight was things were just too vanilla. No one was accusing uh, Chev of being too vanilla, I don't think, back in 2018 when the wheels kind of came off. Maybe predictable. Yes, predictable. But it was a lot of things that worked against CSU that didn't work against USC, mm-hmm. uh, which is the same letters just reversed, just so you know. Um, wow. But <laughs> wow. <laughs> tonight, it wasn't a, a case of, oh, these plays worked against UCLA and they'll just never work against San Diego State. Mm-hmm. It was, well, these plays are just like 12 plays that the Buffs know they run well, <laughs> and so they're going to run those today. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also want to say, I almost went a full Thanksgiving season without hearing the word tryptophan. 
thank you for not letting that happen. <laughs> Got you. It's very important. Okay. Um, Can you imagine after your Thanksgiving <laughs> meal being told, okay, now you have to redo your entire job for the whole week? I was out. Exactly. I was out. And I, I wanted to watch football, but I was out. I passed out at like 1030. And of course, our Black Friday sale went live at midnight. And I have, I have alerts on my phone set to vi- like to buzz every single time a sale hits. Well, why do you do that? Because it gives me a little boost of um, what's that word? Endorphins? When you're happy, Trip yes. Oh. Uh, not <laughs> <laughs> it gives me a little endorphin boost every time I see someone you know bought a shirt. Um, so there must have been like a hundred that came through within between midnight and twelve ten. Didn't even wake up. That's how out I was. Wow. Wow. Uh, Allie, you had a question like a minute ago? No, I mean, I'm just reading the questions. I personally didn't have a question. You guys touched on this a little bit earlier, but uh, Bobby here is asking, seems like a lot of players um, are angry They aren't because they aren't seeing time. Do you guys believe there's possible transfers? Um, there's, there's always possible there's transfers. Always, yeah. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Um, th- that's just the nature of college football. Yeah. And you hope that people realize what's going on and say, here's where my opportunities are, and here's where they aren't, and say, you know what, injuries happen. You know, Jarek Broussard wasn't supposed to get an opportunity this season um, because of everything that was going on, but he was able to get himself an opportunity. And part of it was things that were out of his control. Part of it was things that were very much in his control. And more than anything, if you're a good football player, you're going to get a chance to play. And I have total faith in this coaching staff, not only to make sure that that's what's happening, but also to make sure that everybody knows that's what's happening. And that if you do earn your touches you're going to get your touches and i could be off i'm not at practice every day i don't get to see what happens but like we were talking about earlier that's what i see rarely are coaches not playing the players that they think give them the best chance to win (laughs) exactly so uh other than like at texas where you have to appease all the texas high school coaches (sighs) or you won't get recruits from there anymore um like there are politics like that involved in college football I'm not getting those vibes from the buffs. Uh, if anything, they would be doing things the other way around if, if recruiting was playing a role uh, in what they're doing here. So it's unfortunate. You wish, like I said, I wish they would have spread the ball around a yep. little bit more tonight. But I think they just, like I said, they just said like, okay, here's what we do well. Let's do a bunch of it and play super vanilla and win 20 to 10 against San Diego State. Yeah. yeah. And, and as a Buffs fan, seeing all that, you know, don't be concerned about it because that happened. Like we said, that happens with football programs. That happens with basketball programs. You lose guys to graduation and transfers, but then you pick up guys um, from recruits and then you receive transfers. So there's always going to be that turnover year over year, especially with a guy like Darrell kind of building up his own staff. So it really shouldn't be a concern, you know, not, not at this point. Yeah. Okay, um, Caesar here asks, did we did the Buffs miss their tight ends today or what? I think the Ooh. tight ends missed the Buffs. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ooh. I mean, there were players out there that I've never heard of. Yeah. I had heard of CJ Shemansky. Um, yep. Not a great game from him. I think he would say that as well. I mean, yeah, exactly. But again, what do you what do you expect? I mean, right. walk on from Monarch. Like, he was put in a tough position. In his first game. His first, game. his first like real action, and you know there were little things like there there was a little, the pass that he dropped. I think mm-hmm. um, it was just like a little they're rolling out. He's right there, and, and I said like if that's Brady Russell there, he probably is a step slower. There's more space like a step behind. It makes the passing lane bigger, and it makes the running lane after he catches it just a little bit bigger. And that's a feel thing, and that's something that Brady Russell probably didn't get right two years ago either. We also and, and missed, it's just a time thing. We also missed our starting center a lot today. Mm-hmm. Yes. What was it? Three snaps that the snaps were completely rough. He, Neuer was credited with two fumbles so that that off yeah. of the snaps there was the other one where it looked like he one tapped it to Broussard um I, <laughs> I mean that was, was luck involved yeah. in that <laughs> while um who was it Chance Lytle was singing opera <laughs> yeah. on the, the timing. screen I the gave, timing I, of that I great <laughs> little touch pass the, with the opera can I give an anti-helmet sticker to Pac-12 Network I don't think you have to I think we're all on the same page there but all sure right. And I'm taking one away from them if they've ever earned <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, I don't think they ever have. Should say Chance Lytle. Great voice. I mean, I guess. It lives wow. up I'm not height. a big opera guy, so I don't have a lot to compare it that to. That surprises but. me. I Real quick, going back to Ryan. 
I do agree that Pac-12 Network was bad today, but you also got to think of they had very little time oh, to switch she's over. She's putting my own narrative on me. Wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> how how much? They had, to, they had to grab a staff to yeah. be here in Colorado. I mean, I've, I worked Pac-12. I worked in those trucks. Like, mm-hmm. I know how long that takes. And being limited staff, one, because of COVID, and then two, so last minute. There's there's a reason why there wasn't a replay guy on every thing, single thing. There's a reason the cameras um, were struggling a bit. I agree, it did not look good, but you got to give them the benefit of the doubt of the late switch. Also, she, I thought Yogi really, Roth was really good. Allie just really put you down. Yeah, right? she did. <laughs> I I don't have anything to say other than we only had a few days to prepare for this post game show, and I think it's perfect. I think we're doing a fantastic job real real quick on the uh the tight end note um just going back to the press conference too so we didn't get a chance to talk to sam Neuer, but we did talk to carl Durrell and he was asked about sam Neuer's struggles and he said that he had a lot of trouble in the seams where he has it in the past and of course he huh. didn't directly attribute it to the tight ends but it felt that way you know you you felt mm-hmm. that absence with with brady russell we saw it in the Stanford game when Brady Russell went down, the difference before and after that injury because he loves going to his tight end. And it's clear on a day like today when you you don't even have a guy that you know you really trust in that position, you're going to force some balls. Other ways, you're going to feel less comfortable and a little bit you know jittery. If you take away anybody's number one option, you're going to feel a little bit lost out there on the field. It is interesting to hear they said that, and I definitely want to go back and look, um, but it's not a huge surprise to, to hear because exactly what you said, you don't have Brady Russell on one of the seams. Well, Dimitri Stanley, your slot receiver on the other side, was pretty quiet as well. Um, and so I do think that that was a good point. And it's worth noting. quiet. We yeah. d- agreed. Uh, but San Diego State, the strength of their defense, their two big defensive linemen, their two safeties. Those are the guys who are kind of working around there too. You hope that Brady uh, can come back somewhat For soon. so many reasons. Yeah, or just like any other tight end that was on the depth chart to start Weren't we the on the fourth string today? Wasn't that who it was? One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Started so, at fourth string and down. So, I mean, realistically, not too, too bad, all things yeah. considered. Because, it's again, it's one of those things where what can you expect from the guy? You know, at least he had a couple drops, but at least he didn't blow a, a pass protection that, you know, got annoyed or hurt or anything like that. So, I guess take it with a grain of salt and in a crazy year like this. The Buffs things in perspective. I believe the Buffs lined up. Multiple times today was seven offensive linemen, which if you're going to not have tight ends, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, the last question we have here is how are you guys feeling or no, can the offense have more success next week? I assume Arizona doesn't drop 12 from Peter here. Uh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. I mean, again, you expect to have a full week to prepare for Arizona. Now uh, I'll knock on wood touch wood actually as we say on the dnvr broncos podcast um because there's no predicting 2020 so you never know what's going to happen but you hope that you have a full week to prepare for arizona you put together a real game plan based on what you've seen on film and you get to practice it all week like i just don't think people understand how important that is to the game of football yeah not it's not just being able to watch the film and make a game plan it's being able to watch the film, which will start tonight for those coaches. It will. Mm-hmm. It, it started before the season. They went through and pre-scouted well, right, everybody. Right. They have a book already. Except for San Diego State. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But they will go through and start tonight. They're probably watching film on Arizona as we speak mm-hmm. uh, on the plane on the plane ride home. Well. Or right. Uh, on the, uh, on the as, short, yes, on as the short the, walk. From the <laughs> in their <laughs> office yeah, about 100 at, feet away. The, yeah, game. sorry. Uh, <laughs> on... At their house or in their office right now. They're mm-hmm. watching film on Arizona. And tomorrow they'll go over for the film today. And they'll probably talk even a little bit about what they want to see and why certain things that you did aren't going to work against Arizona. And then every single day for the rest of the week, they're going to continue watching film on Arizona and taking what they saw on that film and bringing it to practice. Film, practice, film, practice. And it's a process that is meant to last a week. Mm-hmm. Every single time, like the coaches, it's why NFL coaches hate Thursday night football. It's why, you know, this whole thing is, is built. They're used to doing it over the course of a week. So you absolutely expect the offense to be better next week. And Arizona probably has a worse defense than San Diego absolutely. state straight up. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And also does, 
designing new plays, picking the plays that you typically don't run and starting to practice those specifically that week because that's what they do in the offseason, the buildup, is they have even more plays and then they narrow those down and they start pulling from that base each week and throwing new things in that haven't been seen by other teams. This week, I don't think they were throwing many new concepts in. This was just their base offense, their base defense, and uh, I'm, I'm not concerned by that at all. Yeah, and worth noting too, Arizona right now, they're 0-2 and they're down 10 to UCLA in the fourth quarter. So that's mm-hmm. not a great football team. You should expect them to bounce back. And also, I want to give credit to San Diego State in that defense. I mean, that was a solid defense coming in. And again, that was something that should be with perspective because they play in the Mountain West. And I'm not sure of many good teams that play in the Mountain West. I mean, Colorado normally only plays one a year, and that normally ends okay. So I had to get some CSU slander in there. Um, yeah, but we you know, did that earlier. Was a, You're good. Oh, okay. That, that's a good front seven. And that was, I think, the third-rated rush defense in the entire nation coming into it. So... That was a good defense. Um, The Buffs did what they had to do to win against all odds. You could have given that team any amount of excuses to just take this week off and and move on from it. But instead, they they wanted to play. They came out and did it. How come on the broadcast they said that San Diego State has won four out of their last five against the Pac-12, but they didn't mention that the Buffs had won five out of their last five. Oh, wait. Actually, five out of their last six against the Mountain West. Yeah, Air Force. Damn, Ruins Air the Force. stat. Honestly, Ruins Air, the stat. shout out to Air Force. I love Air Force. All right, one more um, from Peter here. He said, please tell Ben they play football in Canada. Um, going back to what you guys were yeah, talking but about earlier. Do they have? Uh, yeah, they're probably awesome. Aren't, really aren't most great. of those middle linebackers from America, though, that go up there and play yeah, for the Canadian League? But if you play in the CFL, you would be ha- you'd have to be considered as – the best like you said are there any linebackers outside mm-hmm. of america or something along those lines that's wow. the best linebacker in canada <laughs> okay in canada. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> and then he asked Wrong. do you guys think the buffs will be ranked tomorrow no 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 i don't either i, I don't think it was enough not. um but they'll beat arizona i'm confident in that and i'm confident they'll be ranked after they do i mean you can't not rank a 4-0 team that's 3-0 in their conference in the power five yeah it's ridiculous yeah i i would have felt better about it if it was a little bit more of a a convincing win but again the national perspective i think takes precedent here and you see a power five against a group of five school and they're going to expect you to win by 20 30 points so a 10 point win in national media perspective for a bus team that really hasn't done a whole lot in recent years yeah that's not going to earn you the same amount of credibility but i completely agree they'll come out of air they should come out of arizona next week four and oh and and should definitely be ranked then it'd be interesting to see though just to look at what the back end of the top 25 looks like. Maybe they just get in there simply because they're three and O and they're Colorado, which is a team that people have heard of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be, I don't expect them to be ranked, but I also don't think I'd be surprised if I woke up and saw Colorado's ranked 25th or 24th in the country. You know, like it's not something I go into expecting, but it's also something where you could expect it. They did a lot of things right today, including winning and becoming bowl eligible, which is really all that matters. They did not win anything. Any style points whatsoever. None. None. But luckily, not they even had like before. one play of style points. I think nationally there there's been a little bit of hype around Sam Neuer. Not not a whole lot, but there's been there's been a little buzz. And, and I think that that'll continue. And, and Jared Broussard. And Jared Broussard as well. And Nate Landman. I think he's pretty well known around draft people as well. Um Ali, do we have any more questions? No. All right. That's gonna do it for today then. Um I'll be back on Monday with Short a, show. another Yeah, I know. We should Wait, Allie, do you have drag it on? Allie, do you have any of your own questions that you think we should talk about? An hour thirty, you're right. So short. Oh, yeah. We can keep going. They deserve more. They're three and zero. I know. Thirty minutes per win. Wow. So keep next it week, going. Next week, keep two it going. Hour. We're going two hours next week. <laughs> By the time this team is in the college football playoff, we'll be up until one a.m. We're just gonna live stream our whole lives at that point. <laughs> I've always wondered how that would go live streaming your life i i just feel like at some point like somebody's like it's gonna happen it's like, actually already happened i w- listened to a whole podcast about oh really it. yeah i just feel like there's there's some like little things that some people do like like do i tie my shoes weird and i just have no idea and that you're I just do getting that weird. dunked on. and then like all of a sudden it's like that's how you do that i can't even like, what see the? your shoe ties i tuck them under my feet whoa pull them is, out wait why? Why? No, 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 hold on. no 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 we need to see if he ties we his do shoes not weird. Need to see tomorrow his on shoes. the tailgate 9 30 <laughs> my shoelaces be there you walk um, around with the with the knots under your feet yeah there's kind of loop They're under under your feet That's so uncomfortable <laughs> already already <laughs> happened this is what i'm talking about whole life why would you share that information why with would world? you want your laces Peter, out why would people want to see how they're tied 
The whiskey is long gone. Well, well my Strava craft coffee Peter isn't. Said. We have to spend more time. Um, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> this man puts his shoelaces under his feet. That's enough for us to go. Could to you imagine sick. playing a sport and like you tie your sh- and it's like underneath it? Like, could you imagine me tying? Nobody plays sports in these. Yeah, when I wear tennis shoes, yes, the laces are on the outside. I honestly feel like this podcast goes more off the rails than the tailgate. No, well, just you wait. You that's a challenge. <laughs> You're we'll going see you to see my shoelaces tomorrow, tomorrow you guys, Allie. You guys stay. You go off the rails on the tailgate, but at least it's still related to football. This one, you guys just talk about the most random. Henry, you yeah. should get a, a pair of shoes like this. It has shoelace holes that go right <laughs> under your feet. Or we could just you share. All and just end the show. I can't see Allie behind the lights, but I just imagine her rolling her eyes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. That is it. Take that us is home. Play all us that off. we have to talk about. Um, if you're on YouTube watching us, we appreciate you. Uh, like it, subscribe, turn on the notifications, do all those things. Um, I'll be back on Monday with another podcast. Watch a tailgate tomorrow to see my two shoelaces. Two your shoelaces. Sho- it worked shoelaces. out. It worked out. <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. You had your whiskey. I had my coffee. Ben's Ben. This is just how it goes. Um, I'll have the DMVR Buffs podcast up Monday. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys then. Let's go Buffs.